streaming live sports event today. Stream thousands of live and on-demand sporting events from any device. Click link in description box down below to watch full game in high quality. Don't forget to like and subscribe this channel for more sports updates. Thanks for watching and enjoy the game.
So, Herr Hoffman, I think we may proceed. The child is to be christened Johannes Werner. Is that correct? No, just Hans. Hans Werner. Sorry. I'm sure you appreciate that this is a solemn occasion, and nonetheless so because of the troubled times in which we now live. Stationmaster Albrecht Hoffman, you, as a proud servant of the State Railroad, no less than your wife Gerda and your sons Karl and Helmut are gathered here today. Goodbye, Pastor. Thank you. Why did you contradict the pastor? I didn't. I told him it was Hans and not your Hans. What's wrong with that? I noticed you didn't contradict him when he called you station master. What's that supposed to mean? Well, it obviously means that that promotion the railroad's been promising you all these years has finally been granted by God, or someone close to him. <laughs> if that's the kind of nonsense they teach you in university, you might just as well have stayed here and been unemployed like Carl. And if we're going to stand around here all night, we're going to freeze to death. Yeah, why don't you folks go home? Carl and I are going for a drink, yeah, Carl? You bet. Bye, Hans, and don't forget, the man in there says you have a great future, and he should know it's his profession. Does this mean you two are going to be out all night? Mm, no. Unless we get very lucky. Bye. Bye. Steinhagers, please. Where's Mitzi? She's in there somewhere. I'll tell her you're here. Hey, Walter, what, what kind of circus have you got back there tonight? A Nazi circus. Well, I thought you liked that kind. My brother does. He thinks of the wave of the future. Yeah, well, come on. What happened at the meeting? Are you a member now, or what? Uh, just a weekend. I have to be back in Munich on Tuesday. Hello, Carl. <laughs> the last time I saw you was when Helmut took me to that football match, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, the only game we lost all season. What are you doing here? I thought you were training to be a teacher. No, no, no. Mitzi has now decided to become a singer, which means that instead of just punishing children, she can punish everybody. Mm, that's always been the secret of Helmut's charm, the fact that he doesn't have any music. You've noticed that too, huh? Huh. Oh, where do you do your singing? Wherever they'll let me. Do you know that place just off the Bahnhofstrasse? I'm starting there next week. Uh, Fräulein Templer, are these fellows paying for your time or what? No, Uncle Walter, you are. That's what I thought. Will I see you tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Oh, incidentally, how's the new brother? Oh, well, he's fine. And we don't need any more jokes about good tunes on old violins either. Don't be silly. I think it's marvelous. Oh, yeah, just what we need. Six million unemployed and a new baby. Uncle Walter, what's happened to the lousy beer? Do we have to wait forever for it? All right, 
right, Charlie. If you ordered it, it'll be there. Listen, you little poison dwarf. Why don't you go home before somebody steps on you? Hey, fellas, this dump's full of stinking socialists. Or commies. I don't know. All pigs smell the same to me. <laughs> Drink somewhere respectable. Hey, guess we don't have to pay for our drinks. <laughs> I'm afraid we don't appear to have a table at the moment. Well, that's all right. We want the bar. This restaurant has no bar. Herr Meissner, would you be kind enough to ask that young man, his companion, to join me for a drink? Helmut, how are you? Sit down, sit down. Ah, this must be your brother Carl, of whom you always spoke so well. Oh, yes. Every time I tried to praise Helmut's academic talents, he would say, ah, no, Herr Professor, I would much rather be able to play football like my brother. And is that what you have now become? A footballer? Uh, not exactly, no. Ah, uh, what will you gentlemen have to drink? Ah, beer. Two beers, Herr Meister, please. Two beers, Herr Professor. So, how are you finding life at the university? Well, Munich's certainly an improvement on this place, but I don't know as things are. I sometimes wonder if being at the university isn't just a bit irrelevant. But in three years... Yes, in three years I can be an assistant professor, helping to prepare other students for jobs that don't exist. You don't believe in the acquisition of knowledge for its own sake? Not when we have six million unemployed roaming the streets, no. Yes, well, if you're looking for a practical solution, I... Uh... I must admit that uh, the academic life does have a certain uh, aspect of irrelevance. Uh, uh, how about you, now that you are no longer a footballer, what are you up to? Well, I'm an unemployed motor mechanic. I know it. It's very difficult for young people today to know what to do. I must confess that I am rather happy that I'm no longer young myself. Speaking of solutions, Carl has been thinking of joining the Nazis. Do I take it you disapprove? Well, don't you? It's not the party I would have chosen for myself, but that can hardly deter Carl. You are his brother. I should think he'd find your opinion much more relevant. I just don't think they'll deliver what Carl seems to think they're promising. They may call themselves national socialists, but if they ever get to power, you can be sure you'll never see anything that even remotely resembles socialism. What makes you so sure of that? Oh, I don't doubt your stormtrooper friend Rome has dreams along those lines, but Hitler certainly doesn't, and never did. You so I'm afraid he may have a point there, but I can certainly understand why you would find their uh, promises of new order in all this chaos very appealing. You can? Oh, yes. But I must warn you, you may find the price for all this good order and discipline a rather high one. Well, I gather the Nazis have better soup kitchens than all the others, and these days that should be reason enough for joining them. Good to see you, Helmut. Thank you. Tom, good thank luck. You. Huh? Thank you very much. Why did you have to embarrass me like that for? Embarrass? Well, he's Jewish, isn't he? So what? Well, that you don't go asking people like that what they think about joining the Nazis. I don't see why not. Don't tell me you don't have the courage of your convictions. Look, if you're going to start apologizing for things you haven't even done yet, you may not be quite what the Nazis are looking for anyway. Oh, yeah? <laughs> 
But it may interest you to know that I'm not just thinking about joining them. I already did. I signed up this afternoon. You did? Oh, you cunning little devil. <laughs> well, that's fabulous. Now, if anybody gives me any trouble, I can just set my little brother the storm. Yeah, don't count on it. I got you out. I'm enough scrapes as it is. You drag me into, don't you mean? Yeah, well, whatever. Listen, I don't like this dump. Let's go. Yes, you. Didn't you hear me say Heil Hitler? That is not a greeting with which I am familiar. Is that right? Well, you soon will be. Maybe you should start practicing. Come on then, Heil Hitler, let's hear it. Don't I know you? Yes, of course I do. You're that Jew professor from the academy, aren't you? My name is Ludwig Rosenberg, and yes, I am... Don't you know better than to address a man from the SA without first removing your hat? Now, pick it up, and we'll start again, shall we? Why don't you do it yourself? Go on, then, pick it up. in that kind of gesture if you decide to join the party. Well, thanks again. Right. Uh. <laughs> My brother, the stormtrooper, eh? Yeah? <laughs> you weren't exactly a spectator yourself. On the contrary, that's exactly what I was, and that's exactly what I'll be the next time you start something. Yeah. Don't forget it. Come on, let's go see if we can find anything open. Well, I can see you've got a great future with the Nazis. Huh? First day in the party, you start out by beating three of them up. <laughs> Too much for me. Have you tried the schlanker yet? Oh, great. It's about time you had a couple of decent scars to show. And don't you think they're just a little bit old-fashioned? Hell no. The girls love them. Ah! Listen up. Do I know you? What's your name? Hoffman. Helmut Hoffman. You could be good, but you're vulnerable. Be careful with that left arm. Without balance, you're always vulnerable. Are you at the university? What subject? Classics. You'd do better to take a serious interest in fencing. Just a minute. Yes? Be here at 8 o'clock tomorrow. We'll see if we can make anything of you. Who's that bizarre character? You don't know him. That's Reinhard Heydrich, personal assistant to Heinrich Himmler in the SS. Oh, yes, those people. Yes. They tell me if you ever need a friend, he'll sell you one. So why should you worry? If he wants to make a fencing master of you, who knows, maybe you'll end up at the Olympics. <laughs> 
Meanwhile, he may do better to drum up some votes for Uncle Adolf. I understand he may be needing them. I just got a job, that's all. But you already had a job, driving for those SA people. No, 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 that's just part-time. I don't get paid for it. This is for money. I'm going to be working as a mechanic down at the bus garage. Are you going to be in for supper tonight? No, no, I'm sorry. I had to do a meeting. Not another fight with us Red Front people. No, no. It's a proper election meeting. They say the Rome's going to be speaking. I don't like that man. He looks just like a pig. Huh? I'll tell him you said so. They can yours on down to Munich. Mm. No, I'm driving Beagler. He lives here. Oh, you're yeah, lucky. Lutz will be going down to Hanover. I'll probably be up all night. Here they come. Never mind, Beagler. I shall tell Himmler to keep his SS clowns out of your way. Damn it, old man, they're only ever supposed to be the Fuhrer's personal bodyguard. Now they're ordering everybody about it, even me. You know what? There's hardly a real soldier amongst them. However, when Hitler becomes Chancellor, there'll be some radical changes in that department, too. Very radical. Your driver may be prettier than mine, but uh, doesn't seem to know much about motor cars. Yours doesn't look too bad, either. Maybe I'll borrow it one day. Hal Hitler! He's in Munich. He says he won't be back till Christmas. What are you drinking? Ah, uh, nothing for me. You know the rules. All right, give me one of those. Uh, creme de menthe. Yes, a creme de menthe. It's only colored water, but they'll still charge you an arm and a leg yeah. for it. Oh, that's all right. I just got a job. Doing what? Beating up old ladies? Uh, no. No, that's just in my spare time. So what do you hear from Helmut? Well, not much. I only seem to hear from him when he wants something. Yes, I've noticed. Well, I liked your song. Only one? Oh, well, I just got it. <laughs> what have you been up to in that lion tamer's outfit of yours? Well, we had an election meeting. We seem to be having elections every three months yeah, these days. Yeah, this one could be important. Why is that? Your people planning a little push if they don't get enough of? A little push? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. You better ask Hitler. He never talks to me about that kind of thing. Damn. Oh, hell, there's Steiner. I'm sorry, I'll have to go. He's the owner. Wants me to meet someone who needs a singer for a place he's opening next year. Says it's something really exclusive. You can just imagine, can't you? Thanks for coming by, and uh, say hello to Helmut, if you get a chance. I...
Wake up, Carl. The foreman's watching you. What do you think? Is it gonna hold up? Well, what it needs is the crankshaft for grinding. Yeah. I can't see them forking out any money for that. Just make sure the bearings are all right, and then we'll uh, increase the oil pressure a bit. Huh? Carl, listen. When I took you on, you said that you'd be willing to join the Union. That's right. Why? You never told me you were the Nazis. Well, you never asked. Oh, right. That's true enough. But don't you think it's a bit of a contradiction? I mean, being with the Nazis and... I want you to join the Union. Well, I don't see why. We both want the same things. <laughs> Come on. Don't tell me you're one of those people who actually believes that the Nazi brand of socialism has got anything to do with the Brotherhood of Manor or something. Why not? Because the fact is, if your friend Hitler ever got what he was after, there wouldn't be any trade union, socialist or otherwise. That's nonsense. Hitler's not going to do anything to hurt the unions. I like you, Carl. What's more, you're a pretty good mechanic. But you don't know a damn thing about politics. Never mind. As it turns out, we won't have to fight about it now anyway, will we? Haven't you heard? Been on the radio all this morning. Heard what, for God's sake? The elections, you dummy. The Nazis lost two million votes and 34 seats in the Reichstag. 34? That's right. That's 34 Nazis that have to go and warm the backside somewhere else. <laughs> You're improving, but not as much as you should. Tell me, have you had any more thoughts about coming to work with us? The SS or the party? The SS is the party. Or oh, very soon will be. Has anyone told that to Rome or his SA stormtroopers yet? Well, they're just the foot soldiers of the movement. Make no mistake, it's the SS that will be in control. Yes, but apart from anything else, I still have two years at the university left. Two years before you become what, exactly? Some impoverished teacher of literature? Probably, yes. But frankly, I don't believe in the party's philosophy. You don't believe? Do you think I care what you believe? I want your intelligence, not your belief. You can forget about Teutonic Knights and Germanic destiny. Leave that to people like Himmler. I'm talking about an organization that's going to control not only the party, but every aspect of the state itself. Now tell me the truth. Wouldn't you like to be part of something like that? Well, well it sounds fine, but I mean, the party has yet to get to power, and judging by the last election results, that could be some time. And besides, I understand they're running short of funds. Is that a fact? Are you attending any lectures of vital importance tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Then I suggest you join me for a trip to the Ruhr. You're not lacking intelligence, Hoffman. You're lacking information. Von Schroeder controls the biggest bank in Cologne. The one on the right's Vogler, United Steel. The other one's Oetker, he manufactures baby food. Nice combination. That's Emil Kierdorf. He'll be celebrating his 85th birthday next week. That's if he makes it up the stairs. Meanwhile, he owns enough coal fields to keep Europe warm through the next ice age. Our Chancellor von Schleicher says Germany is on the road to recovery. Pity he won't be there to see it. Well, how long do you think his government could last? Two months, maybe three? 
And then? Why, then, according to our revered constitution, President Hindenburg will confer the title of Chancellor on someone else and ask him to form a government. Yes, but who? Who, indeed. Hindenburg will, of course, listen to these distinguished gentlemen. After all, they own the country. Why shouldn't they have a voice in running it? They're here to decide who's going to be the next Chancellor. They already know who's going to be the next Chancellor. It's simply the price they're haggling over. They think they're getting a lap dog for their money. A mongrel that can be house trained. But surely they'll be demanding some kind of price for their support. Obedient workers. Docile trade unions, plenty of profits. Nothing he wasn't planning to give them already. Of course they'll expect to hear a lot less inflammatory talk of a second revolution from Rome and his SA friends. In fact, they'll be expecting to hear a lot less from Rome altogether. Do you think that's too high a price to pay? Well, who needs revolutionaries when the revolution has already been achieved? Exactly. I bought it for you. Here. Oh, no, this, no. <laughs> you can't do it like that. You have to undo it first. Here, give it to me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, leave it. Oh, but it makes me look like a. Anyway, it's too expensive. Everything you bought. They're much too expensive. You must have used your whole allowance. Now, don't worry. I'm going to be earning some money. You won't have to support me anymore. You're not thinking of leaving the university. I already have. I turned in my books a week ago. But you're not going back? But you're still going to teach. You're still going to be a teacher, aren't you? No, but listen, I'll be earning more than I would after 10 years as a teacher. 10 years? Are you going to be some director of a bank or something? All right, maybe not quite that much right away, but it'll certainly be more than I get from teaching, and I'll finally be doing something. Doing exactly what? I'm going to work for a man called Heydrich. He's in Munich, and he's setting up... Oh, Heydrich? You talking about the SS? Yes. <laughs> I thought you didn't believe in all that overheated Nazi philosophy. Well, of course not. It's primitive rubbish. But listen, all that ideological nonsense those lunatics keep spouting is neither here nor there. They'll probably be told to drop it when the party gets into power anyhow. What? Well, now you admit we're going to get into power. Sure, you'll win. But then you are going to be faced with actually running a highly complex modern state. And those crazy idealists like your friend, Rome, wouldn't even begin to know how. It'll take practical young professionals to run this country. Some, somebody with common sense. People like you, I suppose. That's right. People like me. Do you really believe all of that? But of course I do. Why shouldn't I? I don't know, Helmut. Sometimes I think you just believe whatever happens to be convenient for you at the moment. Well, come on. Hey. Zero. Every time we got a new chancellor, 
I would have been broke a long time ago. Yeah, sure, you can probably remember when Bismarck was chancellor. Yes, I can. And they didn't have songs to honor pimps then either. The horse vessel? What are you talking about? Horse vessel was killed in a fight against the communists back in 30. I don't care if he was killed by a troop of performing monkeys. He was still a pimp then, all the same. So what if he was in his spare time? We've all got to make a living, haven't we? I don't see why. You have a real talent for making friends, don't you? Never mind, if he makes jokes like that in the future, you can probably have him shot. Anyway, it's time I picked up Mitzi from that glorified brothel. Did you ever look her up, like I told you? Yeah, just the once. She didn't seem very pleased with you. Why? Well, for one thing, she never seems to hear from you unless you're in town. Well, what's the point of hearing from me when I'm not in town? I don't know. You do take her a bit for granted, though, don't you? Oh, you think so, do you? Come on, girls are always getting upset about something. She'll be all right. Do you want to come with me? What for, to hold your hand? Well, cheer up. The Fuhrer says this thing will last for a thousand years. I'll see you tomorrow. they'll lose you. <laughs> no, it's just a bit of nonsense. I suppose it's supposed to make us feel as if we really belong. What do you think will happen now? Well, like I told you, Hitler will wait for Hindenburg I meant with and... us. Oh. If you're going to Berlin, I don't suppose you'll be back here that much. Well, maybe not. Not for a while. What would have happened if I'd been pregnant last year? But you weren't. But suppose I had been. Well, you seem more upset that you weren't pregnant. Hoffman is off on his travels again, eh? Hello. What are you doing here? I just came to say goodbye to Dr. Leibowitz. Well, he's leaving the country? No, oh, no. Things haven't quite come to that yet. No, he's giving some lectures in Hamburg. Right. All the same, it certainly looks as though we're in for some bad times again, doesn't it? You mean the official attitude toward the Jews? I mean the official attitude towards everybody. Certainly can't imagine that the Jews will be singled out for preferential treatment. Well, I think you'll find that the anti-Semitic aspect of all this will blow over sooner than you think. Yes, that's what a surprising number of my Jewish friends keep saying. I wish I could share their optimism. So, um, you're off to Munich again, eh? Uh, Berlin. I've taken a job. I'm going to work for the security department of the SS. SS? You're leaving the university to enter the SS. But why, Helmut? Why you? Do you remember that piece from Goethe you used to quote at us? Something about uh, making decisions. You must the hammer or the anvil be? That's it. That's the one. Well, I finally decided that people like us Hoffmans have been the anvil long enough. Maybe it's time we started doing some of the hammering. Yes. Mind you, if Goethe had spent much time in a blacksmith shop, he might have noticed that the hammer tends to wear out much sooner than the anvil. I'm sorry, I've disappointed you, haven't I? Just try to do your hammering with a little discretion, won't you, Helmut?
of what's happening. Who the hell are you? What do you think is happening? We're celebrating May Day. Workers of the world unite. Hoffman, reporting from headquarters, transportation section. You're late. We have to send for another driver. I had to grab the standard and go to Hanover last night. We just got back. Wait here. You in charge here? That's right. Who are you? Rudolf Wagner, branch secretary. This is your property. You have no right to be here without a warrant, you know. You've got it wrong, little man. As from today, this union is suspended. And this is government property. So go celebrate your Labor Day somewhere else. Or I'll take them. He needs an ambulance. I can have another drink. <laughs> I don't think he can hear me. In fact, I think he's deaf. Are you deaf? Huh? I think you'd better leave. What's that? It's all right, Heinz. I know him. I'll take care of it. Foldy, why don't you get us a cab? Oh, we're gonna go someplace else and have a drink? Oh, God. Shall we go? Yeah. You know what we did today? Why don't you tell us about it in the cab? I don't want to tell you about it. Because... Because I forget, that's why. <laughs> But I do think that we should have another drink. <laughs> I certainly do think that. Yes, speaking. Who is it? Helmut. Who do you think? Well, how should I know? It isn't as if you called every day. Anyway, they simply said Berlin and announced the Obersturmfuhrer as if it were a message from God. Oh, I see. Uh, well, our switchboard people tend to be a bit military in their manner. I suppose that's what they're paid for. Anyway, listen. I'm coming home this evening. We could have dinner. Oh, I see. The Obersturmfuhrer is visiting the provinces, so I get to have dinner. Yes, all right. Listen, Carl's here. I think he wants to speak to you. Carl? What's he doing there? He got a bit drunk last night. I'll let him tell you about it himself. All right, put him on. Uh, isn't this, uh, back my office anymore? No, two doors down. Thanks. And who are you? Hoffman, assistant to Heydrich. Another one. He's got so many special assistants, no one ever knows what they're all doing. Uh, nobody except Heydrich, you mean? Exactly. Come on. Carl, what have you been up to now? Never mind that. Now, listen, you're the one who's supposed to know everything. The hell ordered that action against the unions yesterday. Uh, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but this happens to be one of the times when I evidently don't know everything. I'll tell you what, I'll talk to you about it tonight. I'll give you a call when I get in. Okay, bye. Uh, 
I forgot to introduce myself. Becker. Attached to St. Dietrich's headquarters, Liebstandarte. Ah, one of the Fuhrer's personal bodyguards. Well, if I ever need anybody shot, I'll know who to come to, won't I? <laughs> Always happy to be of service. There you are. Where have you been? There's a Mrs. Lunder in the front room. She wants to talk to you. Here? Where have you been all night? She says that you were at some union office where her husband got hurt or something. Why didn't you tell me? Because I just got in. But what happened? What's it all about? Nothing. The union's been suspended. We took over the offices, that's all. But why? Why did you do that? Because it's full of Bolsheviks, that's why. Communists, if you like. Mr. Lunger is a communist? Well, how should I know what he is? Did she say anything about him? Did she say how he is? She doesn't know yet. The doctors say he's got a broken spine. police came last night. They say it was an accident. I'm sure they're right. But the court said we should speak to you first. First? Before lodging a formal complaint. Against the SA? Against those members of the SA responsible for Mr. Langner's injuries. You saw what happened. You could be a witness. My husband always speaks very well of Carl. I'm sure he'd be the first to help us, if it were possible. Apparently not. I'll request my section leader's report. If there's something in it you ought to know, I'll tell you about it. That's presumably the same report the police base their opinion on. Right? Stop pursuing this thing, you're going to talk yourself straight into a concentration camp. Do me a favor, Mitzi, tell him, will you? Tell him what? What I've just been trying to get into his thick head. I think he's trying to tell you that the business of throwing elderly trade unionists downstairs is too important a subject for discussion amongst the rank and file of the SA. And whose side are you on, anyway? Listen, as things stand, Lunger is still entitled to a pension. You start stirring things up and they'll probably decide he doesn't even qualify for that. Your name will stink and he'll starve. Is that what you want? Listen, it wasn't just some isolated little event, you know. It happened all over the country, and it was ordered by the party. Yeah, in that case, maybe it's high time we had the second revolution. There the isn't SA going to be any second revolution. Garbage collector. And the sooner you realize it, the better for oh, you. Oh, yes, why is that? Because if Rome doesn't stop talking about taking over the army and antagonizing the entire establishment, there's going to be one hell of an explosion, and when the smoke clears, he'll have disappeared. You know, who's going to get rid of him? The SS? Rome has been Hitler's personal friend longer than any of them. Hitler doesn't have any personal friends. Well, come on, drink up. This place is too expensive for us to be wasting good wine. Do you remember the first night we were here? The night I told Rosenberg that you were thinking of joining the party? And was he amused? He wasn't offended, if that's what you mean. I suppose you know they kicked him out of his job last week. What? How do you know? Who told you? My landlady's cleaning woman works for what the hell does it matter who told me? You talk as if it was some kind of big surprise to you. All right, I'm sorry. It wasn't a surprise. I just thought he might have had the sense to retire before it happened. You'd have found that less embarrassing, would you? Get this way. I'll see you outside.
trust the Herr Sturmführer found everything satisfactory? It's Herr uh, Obersturmführer to you. Oh, uh, why, yes, of course, excuse me, Herr uh, Obersturmführer. Yeah, well, he found it adequate. Look, you can keep the change. Anyone would think I kicked old Rosenberg out myself. Hey, Hitler! You really think your SS people can take on the SA? You really think your Rome is bulletproof? Yes, that's marvelous news. We'll be with you for breakfast. Come in. Oh, Hoffman. You won't be getting much sleep tonight. You have to be in Munich by 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. Yes, sir. Anything else, sir? Tell me, is it still your opinion that the SA have become nothing more than the party's garbage collectors? So you think our Führer has neglected and betrayed his old comrades, do you? Don't you, sir? <laughs> I was beginning to often. I must confess, I was beginning to. But that's all going to change now. We're meeting with Hitler tomorrow. Rome and all general officers of the SA. This time it'll be the army and those damn politicians that'll be dancing to our tune for a change. All right, Hoffman. I'll let you know where to pick me up. Just a minute. You know, you should be an officer by now. Probably would be if you weren't always so damn provocative. It stand easy. This Langner business, for instance, demanding to see your section leader's report. Did you imagine that would do you any good? No, sir. I thought it might do Mr. Langner some good. And did it? All right. Never mind. that the army finally believes that Rome is about to move against them? No, I don't think they really believe it, but I'm sure they'll be very happy to have been persuaded of it. And having been persuaded of this clear and present danger, will they tolerate whatever measures we may think necessary? Well, if they've already agreed to cooperate, presumably they'll tolerate anything that appears to be in their interest. Yes, that's what I think, too. Tell me, Hoffman, is it your intellect or your relatively humble position that causes you to agree with me? Oh, on this occasion, perhaps both. Perhaps. You mean perhaps we ought to promote you in order to really find out? Oh, go on, get out! Stand by in your office. This could be a long night. Personal bodyguard. I thought he was in the Rhineland. 
He's meeting with Rome and the rest of that essay scum in the morning. All of them? Yeah. At Rome's hotel on the lake. The entire leadership. Oh, um... Remember asking me about ever wanting anyone shot? Well, maybe now's the time if you've got anyone in mind. Thanks. If I happen to think of anyone, I'll send you a telegram. I'm going to be stuck here all night. I'm going to need cigarettes. No, 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 no. I'll get them. If anyone wants me, I'll be about 20 minutes. Mitzi. Mitzi. Yes, I'm sorry. I was asleep. Listen, is Carl there? Here? No. What are you talking about? Well, it has been known, hasn't it? I'm sorry to disappoint you, but he doesn't make a habit of staying here any more than you do. All right, all right, but listen. This is important. Have you seen him at all? Yes, I saw him this afternoon. He said he was going to Munich tomorrow. Driving Beagle? Yes, I suppose so. Why? See if you can find him. Don't call the neighbors. Tell him yourself. Tell him to report sick tomorrow. Do whatever he wants, but stay home. What's going on? What's happening? I can't talk now. Just tell him, and tell him to keep his mouth shut. I'll try and call tomorrow. Oh. 